Dude, what seat you want, buddy? What? Uh, Bobby thought we were doing a rap video today, so he, he was playing Run DMC. He got very inspired, put on his best Adidas, and here we are. Sit down, Michael. <laughs> Uh, I can't believe you won a James Beard Award in 1962. That's so inspiring. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> Thanks for having us. So, um, Michael. Yes, Bobby. I want to ask you a quick question. So I was just, look, I was just rifling through your new cookbook. Mm -hmm. And it's very different from your last books because yeah. your, last book, your last books are um, very sort of carnivore driven. One is actually called carnivore. So yes, I would say extremely carnivore driven. Yes, you are. You are known as a as a uh, meat cook uh, cooking expert. You eat a lot of pork. Yes. <laughs> um, and this book is so helpful, and and um, just a complete departure from what you've done in the past. How do you like? How do you keep the big flavors that you're known for, but also make it helpful? Well, you know, for me, I. I there were some realities that I had to face in life, and I mean, you know this more than anybody, it, but um, you know, I, I've suffered, I have two autoimmune diseases. I have RA, and I have external lupus. And you know, I found out I had rheumatoid arthritis when I was 23. I found out I had external lupus when I was 27. Um, both cause an incredible amount of inflammation. And, and for most, you know, in my 20s and 30s and 40s, geez, oh man. Um, <laughs> Thank God I'm not as old as you. Um, let's, let's welcome Michael to the 50 Club. He just turned 50 <laughs> the other day. And a grandfather. Yeah. Bobby thinks that now I'm a grandfather that I'm suddenly older than him. He, he I'm like, if that's not how it works, we still, you still were born four years before me. Um, but so, you know, when I was younger, I would just kind of grind through the pain, essentially, and, and take tons of a leave and just be like, eh, you know. And as time went on, it, it got worse, um, and then it started affecting my golf game, which is very upsetting. And so, you know, I, I, uh, two years ago, we were doing the chew, and the, um, the producer said, in January, everybody pick a diet that they want to go on for a month. And I don't diet. I, I hate the word diet. I think it's an awful way to think about food, like I'm, I'm going to not enjoy things. I, I just, I'm, a, I'm against the word diet completely. But what I did is I said, you know, I'm going to do a little research on food that causes inflammation, and I'm going to eliminate all those things from what I eat for 30 days, see how I feel, and then start entering them back in one at a time and see what my triggers are because everyone's triggers are a little bit different. So for a month, and it was an awful month, I eliminated uh, beef booze, flour, sugar, dairy. And at about the 13th day, my wife, who's also a dear friend of Bobby's, and we've been together for nearly 30 years, she looked at me and she said, I would rather have you suffer in pain for the rest of your life <laughs> than you be this miserable for 17 more days. But also around that time, my body started feeling incredible. And I'm like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. I've eliminated all this stuff and I'm eating foods that reduce inflammation like turmeric and blueberries and all those things. And I felt really great. And then when I started adding things back in, my triggers ended up being dairy and sugar, which. So you, 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 you did it through process of elimination. Process, every yeah. week I added one thing back yeah. and if, I would, if it would affect me, I'd be like, that's a trigger. Fortunately for me, it wasn't beef and it wasn't bourbon or else I'd be miserable the rest of my life. <laughs> But the way that I treat it, because I don't treat it like a diet again, is now I have my blueprint on the way that I should eat, and the book teaches you how to get that kind of, that how to figure that out. Um, now, you know, there's times where, you know, you and I go to dinner, and you're like, you want to get two scoops of ice cream? And I'm like, you bet your ass I do. And I know the next day it's going to be like a hangover a little bit. I'm not going to feel great. But I know what caused it. So then I could, the next day I don't have it again, and, and life is good. Um, and it, it has reduced my joint pain, I would say, by 80% to the point where, you know, now I don't take, I was taking like six a leave a day, um, which I found out isn't good for you, in case you guys, <laughs> if anybody wasn't certain about that, I'm here to tell you, not good for you. So, um, so, you, so basically, you eat 
Um, your, your book talks about how to eat to reduce that, that kind, those kinds of issues, so, but you, you do it in moderation? Yeah, it's how to find your triggers, yeah. and then each chapter deals with a trigger. So if your trigger is this, here's you know, X amount of recipes so you could eat without having the trigger, and the food's always still delicious. It's not, you know, I, I'm not gonna have, we eat together a lot. I'm not gonna say, Bobby, come over for dinner. Look, I made you kale salad. Woohoo! Like, it's not that kind of food. It's not like, you know. There is a kale salad in your book, there though. There is, but I, <laughs> that's because I like kale salad. But, but, it's, but it's, not, it's, not, it's not this, um, when I'm eating this way, I don't feel like I'm giving things up. Yeah. And I think that is the key to. Uh, well, that, that was my original question about 18 minutes ago, which was, how do you get the, how do you still. In case no one knows I'm Greek and Sicilian, I could talk for the full, yeah. till 9.30. Yeah. How, how, do you, how do you get the, f the full flavors of your cuisine into food like this? You know, reducing all the fats and the sugars and the dairy yeah, and all that. It wasn't like, um, you know, you find other spices. I, I go right. into your playbook a little bit with some chilies and, right. and um, different seeds. Yeah, I noticed a couple of things I recognize in the book. Well, you know, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's about time. I mean, you know, like eventually I had to take something. I'm going to talk back. to you about that sweet potato hash after we get out of here. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, did you know, you know, like I'm Greek and Sicilian. All Bobby does now is talk and cook about Italian food. That's, That's all right. he does. Like I've never heard of it in my life. I'm like, yeah, I grew up eating this. So your book, which I love because I'm, been fort I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of dinners and meals at your house, is, and when I, when I read your book, it really is great because the things that you put in the book, I, I've eaten them all <laughs> right. because I've been to all the dinners. And I love that you've given people a look into not you, the restaurateur chef, or mm -hmm. you, the Beat Bobby Flay chef, but you, the at-home chef. Well, um, you have 18 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> what, was the <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> what, what, what made you want to, because, you know, you're interesting, because you're kind of a, like, for someone who is, puts himself so out there on TV, you're, you're private. I mean, you're a pretty shy, he's actually shy. I know that is shocking to people, but he's a relatively shy um, to himself guy. So, and, and I know that you're, you speak so much through your food, so to let people into your world a little bit with the book about yeah. how you cook at home, what was your thought? Well, 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 well I think that um, I get asked a lot, like if, if we're on a media tour or something like that, like um, a, a journalist will often ask me, okay, so you know, we know what you do for your career, um, but what do you do to relax? You know, what do you do on your, your, your time off? And um, it's actually the same answer <laughs> as my career, which is I cook. But, you know, it's a different pace. It's a different approach. Um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's things that, um, well, it really runs the gamut. It's not just comfort food, so to speak. It depends on, you know, the time of the year or um, the time When's of the, the day. the last time you went to Italy? Yeah, exactly. When I get it, well, I get inspired by my travels. Yeah. I mean, and my travels could be, um, you know, going to a place like uh, Sicily, or it could be like going to like the restaurant I went to last night in New York City. I mean, I get inspired by every, I, I get inspired, I get inspired daily by, um, you know, what I see and what I eat um, in 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 my life because food is so important to me. It's 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 the it's my it's my outlet, and I do it to relax. It's, it's, I love to cook. It's the thing I love more than anything. I mean, people ask me all, all the time, like, do you like doing food television or do you like cooking in your restaurants more? It's not even close. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, I've been lucky enough to be, get, to, to be given an opportunity to be on television. Or else you'd never be able to afford that sweatsuit. And it's a... <laughs> now, now I know what I'm getting for Christmas. <laughs> Dude, this is so easy. We'll do the full rap video then. I know. I just want to let you know, this is also, this is velour. I just want you to know. I, I, oh, you don't have to tell them, they know. No, no, they don't know. <laughs> it's not nylon, it's velour. Don't just, worry, Rav, they're yeah, fully aware. Okay. Continue, I'm sorry. I also, I, oh, wait. I also have the sneakers to match. I just want to make sure everybody understands yeah, that. I know, it's a complete outfit. Anyhow. Um, <laughs> And I, I just I bought my 102 year old grandpa. I told you the same exact outfit. <laughs> <laughs> he wears it. He, he loves it. He looks just like Bobby. He's only four years younger. 
Okay, go on. Uh, why do you get, you're inspired, I'll help you. You're inspired by- I need the audience to do something for me. <laughs> Please don't, don't laugh, laugh at, at his jokes. Do not, not laugh funny. anymore, because if you keep laughing at him, you're going to encourage him. <laughs> and, and he's not that funny, and, I, and you keep making him seem like he's funny, but he's not funny. And then I have to deal with it. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you um, for that service. Uh, I, I really do cook to relax. It's the thing I love to do more than anything else. And, um, you know, you know, whether it's in the summer at my house in the country or it's in my apartment in New York, I just, I just love it, you know, and it's, and it's the thing, I, 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 I show my love and my affection for my friends and my family through my cooking, through my food. I, I feed people. I mean, that's how I, that's how I do it. So um, this book is really personal to me um, because it really, is the, it really is a collection of the dishes that I cook it at home, not the, not the ones that I cook in my restaurant. And frankly, um, for people who are looking to buy cookbooks, that's usually a more successful venture for them because trying to find restaurant ingredients or, rest or doing restaurant techniques is usually a lot more daunting than doing a at-home uh, cooked meal. So, um, so far, I, I've been on, you know, I've been touring this book for the last, uh, you know, five or six weeks and people really seem to, to gravitate, it, gravitate towards it, maybe um, more so than any book I've written. Um, so it's, it's really nice. You know, what I, you know what I love about the book and I love about your food is, um, you know, I, I started eating your food like pr probably a lot of people did here, you know, 20 something years, 20, how long ago did Mesa open? The original Mesa place? Grill opened in 1991. It was in open for 26 years. Yeah. So at the original Mesa was when I f was first introduced to your food and it was very Southwestern driven but always had like really great impactful flavors. Mm -hmm. Like whenever I ate at your restaurants, I always remembered the meal. Like, you know, you go out to eat sometimes and you eat it and people go, what, next day, what'd you guys have? Yeah. And, and you're not sure? Like, I always remembered your food. And, and to watch how you have continued to grow and evolve and change as a chef, like, you know, now you're a lot more influenced, I think, by the Mediterranean than you've ever been before, especially Italy. But when I eat your food, it still yeah. is, it has those great impactful flavors that you remember the next day. And, I, and I'll find the chili anywhere. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but I mean, I think for home cooks, for people cooking your book, the greatest lesson that you could learn from this book and from Bobby's books and from watching Bobby on TV is really how to maximize flavor. You know, really how to have those impactful, punchy flavors that, that leave people wanting more and then the following day making them talk about it. Yeah. Let's take a question from okay. the audience. What do you think about that? Good. Because otherwise you're going to waste up all this time. <laughs> Anybody have a question? Anyone want me to tell more jokes? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not funny. Where did you both eat last night and what did you have? You know, I, he didn't invite me out to dinner last night, unfortunately. <laughs> we worked together all day and he went off on his own and left me lonely at my house. Where did you, where did you go? First of all, I'm single and I need a, I need a date. So <laughs> you're not helping me in that department. I went to a brand new restaurant. Actually, I got a gigantic review in the New York Times on Wednesday called Lama San. Did you read it? It's, um, I just opened a new restaurant in Vegas called Shark and it's very much that sort of flavor where it's a lot of Peruvian and um, it's called Nikai cuisine. So it's, it's in, in Peru, there's a huge Japanese community, and they've sort of created this cuisine that, that, that they fuse together, like Peruvian chilies and ingredients with Japanese ingredients. So it's like ceviches with you know, soy and Peruvian chilies and you know, coconut milk and water. I mean, it's just spectacular. Anyway, I went to this restaurant last night called Lamasan. It was, it was fantastic, really great. I went Go to, there. Um, I went to Ipudo last night. Um, and ha had what I feel is the best bowl of ramen in New York City. Pork ramen with the poached egg in there was nothing short of spectacular as it always is. Anybody else? Yes. Sure. In the world? Vetri. Mine is uh, Vetri in Philadelphia. Um, it's Mark Vetri, he's a dear friend of mine and Bobby's. Uh, I, I, there's just, it, it's a 38 seat Italian restaurant. 
It's great. They book up months in advance. There's just something. It's the original Lebec Finn. Um, there's no bar. There's no. It's just a restaurant, and I've eaten there dozens and dozens of times. And it's high end Italian, but it is. There's just something very magical. Magical. <laughs> I'm drunk. Um, <laughs> There's, there's something very magic about the restaurant that I just love. Um, uh, my favorite restaurant, I think the, um, the most enjoyable times I've ever had in a restaurant is at a place on the Amalfi Coast called Los Scolio. Yeah. It is right on the Mediterranean. They pick the fish out of the Mediterranean. They combine it with homemade pastas. And, and then um, we drink 15,000 bottles of wine. And it's... Um, I go there for about 10 days a year, every year, and all we, all we look forward to every single day is three-hour lunches, and that's where we have them. Yeah. You could get to mine in an hour on the train. <laughs> you can eat at mine in your bathing suit. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yes? Okay, Bobby, um, I've been watching the show with your daughter, and I was wondering, the playlist? Yeah. yeah. How did that come about, and um, could you talk a little bit about it? Oh, sure. Um, so my daughter is 23. Her name is Sophie. And um, she is now, uh, she graduated from USC about a year and a half ago, and she's now. <laughs> 70,000 a year. <laughs> it was a great education, though, for me. Um, anyway, yeah, so she graduated a year and a half and a year, year and a half ago. Now she's a reporter for ABC in Los Angeles. She's a digital reporter. But, um, you know, Sophie and I share a wonderful relationship. I am, a, I am a blessed dad. I have the great, I have just a fantastic daughter. Um, and, um, and, you know, obviously food's an important part of her life. She's not really a big cook, which now she is starting to regret the fact that every time I asked to show her something, she would ju rather jump in the pool with her friends. Because now her boyfriends are like, wait a second, you're Bobby Flay's daughter, you don't know how to cook anything? This is ridiculous. I, I, was, signing up, I was signing up for good meals. I got nothing. So, She's but one of the greatest eaters of all she time. She is a great eater. She eats everything. Um, and, and so it came about because the Food Network said to me, um, you, you know, you want to do something, we need you to fill some hours. We, we need some more programming from you. What do you want to do? I was like, how about if Sophie and I go walk around New York and, and eat food and show each other our favorite restaurants? They're like, OK. <laughs> so we did the show. And at first, Sophie was like, Dad, I, I don't know if I want to do this. I mean, you know, I'm a journalist. I'm trying to like, be a journalist. And, and you, know, you want me to go and eat in restaurants with you? I was like, uh, OK. I mean, you don't have to. She's like, all right, I'll do, I'll, let's do six episodes. So we did six episodes. and then. At the end of the six episodes, um, she said to me, um, are we going to do more of these? <laughs> and I said, I thought you didn't really want to do them. She's like, Dad, do you see how many Instagram followers I have now? <laughs> Her Instagram followers went way up from the show. So she actually, she really enjoyed, we really enjoyed doing it. It wasn't really like work. Um, so we're going to actually do more now. Um, and she, but she wants to do it in Los Angeles so she can show me where she eats. But it's, it's, a, it's really... I'm really lucky to have um, a relationship like that with my daughter, where it doesn't feel like work, and we're just uh, we're just hanging out. You know, he's understating it too. Like he, that kid, and I've watched her grow up, is one of the most special children. Thank you. I've ever met in my life. She is she is unbelievably fantastic. Yes, she is way better than her dad. Yeah, she is. Yeah, way better. Hi. And he's so svelte, it's unbelievable. He only wears a schmedium. Um, so, <laughs> I want to tell you something. Um, we we have plans to do a podcast together. I've just decided I don't want to do it. <laughs> oh, 
I'm good. Oh, no, I'm counting on that. <laughs> um, so for the book, one of the, a couple things that I noticed by, that happened by accident. Um, as I said, I hate the word diet and everything that evolves around it. I lost a couple pounds, um, which I, I wasn't necessarily, at that time, currently, <laughs> That wouldn't be a bad thing. At that time, I was in pretty good shape, but I and, and I lost a couple pounds. Just I think because you're all of a sudden you're more aware of what you're eating more than anything else. Not because I was hungry at any point. Um, and the other thing that was crazy is, in in addition to the inflammation, one of the things about um, with lupus is, and it, it it is caused by inflammation, but you you tend to like when I found out I had external lupus, I I got these two giant splotches. Uh, like butterfly splotches on my face. And, and I developed eczema, but only in my ears. Like, how pissed off is someone at me? That, like, I can't get it on a place where I could actually itch it. It's in my ears. And uh, when I altered my diet, my skin got, like, 50 times better. Like, it, it just, it wasn't as dry. It was more moist. It, it was really kind of, that really surprised me. So I got a little, a little bit of weight loss. Um, and, but my skin really significantly changed, um, which was surprising. I didn't grow any hair, which I was hoping for, but <laughs> no hair. Well, I mean, to answer your question about the food, yeah, we eat all that food. I mean, it's one of the hazards of our career. And, you know, I, I'm very conscious of it. Like, if I didn't work out as much as I do, I'd be 4 million pounds. But, like, you know, my regimen is... You're I'm pretty... I'm dedicated. You're like, I just finished literally an hour before I got here my 100th episode this year of Be Bobby Flay. I'm done for the season. Yes, thank you. But, so, so like, I get picked up at 7 o'clock in the morning when I'm shooting that. At 5 o'clock, I'm running. I run about 4 or 5 miles. And then I do yoga for, for an hour. And then I get in the shower for 8 seconds. And then I, 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 I go and do the show. But I need to constantly be um, doing some cardio or some kind of workout. Otherwise, yeah, you're very, I can't do like, it. When we well, we've traveled to do some shows together, um, and last year we were in Austin for 10 days? Yeah. 10 days. We were in Austin for 10 days, and Bobby's good about it. Like, he never says to me, hey, dummy, you're getting a little roundish. Like, he'll just go, like, hey, I'm doing yoga this morning. You want to join? And, like, that happened for, like, 10 straight days. Uh, he actually, not only did he ask me that, but before we left, his assistant sent yoga mats and all the stuff to my house. I'm like, I think someone's trying to send me a message. So I packed the yoga mats, I brought them to Austin, and then never unpacked them and brought them back to New York. <laughs> we have one more, one more question. Yep. Hi, Bobby. I watch a lot of your shows, and I see you give comments on people's cooking techniques and skills. When's the last time people commented on your food? And Comment on a what? Like people have given comments on your food, your cooking skills. When was the last time? Four seconds ago. Yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say two minutes ago on Twitter. No, no. I mean, people comment all the time. I mean, oh, after they try. Well, same thing. I mean, when you own restaurants, you have like 300 critics a night. I mean, that's the way it works. I mean, it just people eat your food. They pay for it, and and now there's all kinds of platforms for people to tell you what they think. Um, and let me tell you, know, you what I, we, if can we have two more hours, I want to talk about Yelp. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, no, people comment, comment about it all the time. And um, most of the time, luckily, it's good. But every once in a while, there's a comment. And, and frankly, I don't read every comment. I, it's, not, it's, not what, it's not how I spend my time is reading comments. But like, you know, like somebody might say to me, you know, like somebody in my office might say, hey, um, just FYI, like three people have said that that pasta is a little salty. So then I'm like, I gotta go check that out. And so maybe like, it's not just the salt, maybe it's like the anchovies, the garlic, and the salt that's creating more of a salty kind of feeling to it. I'm just making, like, giving you an example of what it could be. And so like, you know, we just constantly pay attention to what people are saying. But, you know, a one-off comment here and here, here or there, we don't really pay that much attention to it. No, it's, I mean, it's, you, you, can't, you can't get too sucked in to the whole thing or else you just start second-guessing what you know is probably pretty darn good at the end of the day. 
Michael yells back at people on I Twitter. I do. People come at me at Twitter, I'm going right. He's like, quit answering them. Or quit, like, starting, I'm like, if someone calls me an asshole, I'm not, I can't just sit there. I just can't. I wish I could. I yeah, but you know what he does though, but but then he goes back at them and the person has literally 12 followers and he goes back at them and now the person has 200 followers. <laughs> like, anyway. I want, this is the, we have 14 seconds. No, we, no it's, it, it, we're over 17 seconds. We're, oh, the last, the last time I really wanted someone was someone ate at my barbecue restaurant and they told me how to, that I don't know what I'm doing, how to make the perfect brisket for the restaurant. And I said, well, I'd love to know how you do it. And they said, you put it in a pressure cooker, or you put it in a, in a what are those? Uh, Microwave. The pot, yeah, the, the in, you put it in an Instapot with a bottle of baby rays and you cook it for four hours. And that's what, it would, that's what you should serve at your restaurant. Somebody just said, yeah. I heard that it. That was the person. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>